Hello there, minions. It's Wheezy. Today, I'm going to tell you all the reasons why you need to go and buy an Xbox Series S right now, like today. Let's go talk about it. All right, minions, let's start out by saying the number one reason why you should go and get an Xbox Series S right now if you don't have a Series X is because you can get one right now. You can go on Amazon and get a Series S today, have it at your door in two days, and I'm gonna show you in this video exactly why you should do exactly that if you don't have a Series X and why you can get a Series X later when they're available and either sell your Series S or seriously consider keeping it because I got both and I gotta say, I've been very pleased that I have too. Okay, so I can hear your objections right now because they were the same as mine. I got the Series S kind of as an idea that it, there would be some scarcity. I might be able to resell it for a profit. I ended up keeping it. But the big three reasons that you don't want to get a Series S right now that I can hear you thinking about, and I'm going to tell you exactly why you shouldn't let this stop you, is number one, it doesn't have the horsepower of the Series X. It doesn't do full 4K, 120 hertz. It does 1440p upscaled, um, but I'm gonna show you why that's not a huge deal. Number two, it's digital only, like the Xbox One S was. There's no disk drive, so if you wanna play anything on here, it's gotta be digital. And three, it's only 512 gigabytes versus one terabyte in the Series X. But I'm gonna explain why all of those are not good enough reasons to not get a Series S right now, today, because you can. And I'm sorry, you can't really get a Series X unless you're willing to pay $800 for it or more. I'm gonna put links to a Series S that you can buy right now for $300. Like, and I'm gonna show you exactly why you should do that. And it's an affiliate link, so it helps out the channel if you do it, even if you don't buy the Series S. If you follow that and you get other crap on Amazon, it helps me out. But I'm gonna switch over right now to the Series S dashboard, which if you're familiar with any of my videos on the Series X, it's exactly the same as the Series X dashboard. And if you're familiar with the Series S, or not the Series S, sorry, the Xbox One or the Xbox One X, the dashboard is very similar. The only main difference is this animated background um, that isn't really supported on that. But I'm actually gonna switch back and forth between all of them so you can see what's going on. One of the things that I'm really gonna say that I love about Microsoft's consoles is they have, since the Xbox One, unified their experience. And it even includes the backwards compatibility with the Xbox 360 games. So if I launch an Xbox 360 game, it is tied into the same Xbox Live account and it goes ahead and pulls up the Xbox 360 experience. Like you can see here where that is the 360 splash screen. It, you're gonna see that it even synchronizes your gameplay. So I've been going back with Sebastian going through Gears of War games where you just went ahead and started back on Gears 1. We're gonna start working our way through. But I was happy to load it up on the Series S and find that it had literally saved all of my progress to the cloud and it was just instantly here. It has my saved games and in the game it has all of my cog tags that I had found 10 years ago. When did this game come out? Forever ago. So that unified experience all the way back from the 360 to the Xbox One to now the Series S and X is just absolutely incredible. Now, games that I have on disc, like Forza 7, I, I don't have the digital version of it, I have the disc version of it. That is something that I wouldn't be able to play, you know, on here. And matter of fact, Microsoft removed it from the store, so you actually can't even buy it anymore. Um, so you can't get the digital version of that. And for those of you who've been around a while, you know that I have been very pro disc games, and I still am. I prefer to have a physical copy of a game in my hands. Uh, this Friday, Horizon, the new Horizon Forbidden West game is coming out, and I got a disc. <laughs> I pre-ordered a disc, it's gonna be mailed to me. Even though I could get the digital version and be playing it sooner in the day just by downloading it, I st there's still something I really like about having a disc. Do not let that stop you from getting this Series S and I'm gonna explain several reasons why. One of the big ones is Game Pass. I can't escape it either. The digital is kind of the future. Will we get to a point in the near future where you can't get discs? Maybe, 
Right now, when I can get discs, I prefer to do that. You will find yourself, if you don't already, if you're someone who's already into the digital ecosystem, hey, go ahead, you're, this is already right up your alley. But this is, seriously, the internal storage is not a big limitation. So let's just go ahead and start diving into things. First, let's talk about the big things that talk about the limitations, the video output. So as I'm capturing it here, I'm watching it on my display in 4K and um, I am capturing it just because my capture card, uh, my GPU can only really capture 1440p reliably. I could capture in 4K with this if I had a better GPU. Um, but you can see it's outputting 4K, 60 Hertz. This would do 4K, 120 Hertz, although it would be 1440p upscaled. But the point being, the raw output of this, you'll still get a 4K experience. You still get HDR. My display obviously doesn't support some of these features. That's not the console not supporting them. That's my display. But I've got 4K, 60 Hertz, HDR. I mean, it is great. And we're gonna compare some games so you can see the difference or lack thereof between the Series S and X and one versions. Um, and we'll jump into the storage real quick. So here you can see the internal storage. It says 364 gigabytes. So it's a 512 gigabyte SSD. And the operating system uses up a good amount of that. So 364 gigabytes is not a lot of storage, I will grant you. Right now, uh, for what is installed on here, it's a lot of Game Pass games. And that's because the Series S lives in my living room where, where my kids play it most often, mostly Sebastian. And because I have Game Pass, he can download anything that's on Game Pass onto this console and play it. So he's got a bunch of stuff on here. Halo Infinite's installed on here, Minecraft Dungeons, part of Game Pass, Minecraft, part of Game Pass, Roblox, free to play. You can see all these Game Pass tags in here. All these games that I get to play on Game Pass just for the cost of admission. If you haven't seen my video on how to get a discount on a Game Pass Ultimate subscription, I'll link that. Make sure you check that out. I have a good way of reliably paying below market for Game Pass Ultimate, but at 15 bucks a month, I'm telling you, you gotta do it anyway. And that's Game Pass is what makes the Xbox Series S such an amazing deal right now. Buy the console, get Game Pass Ultimate, and just play all the games that you want. And every first party Microsoft game is free on Game Pass. Halo Infinite, day one. Um, there's not a whole lot of first party Microsoft games that are out right now. Uh, Forza Horizon 5, right, when it launched. Free. I'm, I'm going to throw it here as my example, a great example of amazing graphics on the new generation consoles. And I'm going to show you free why it's available on both of these and use it to compare the graphics on the two. So anyway, going back to the storage, you can see I've got quite a bit installed on here, right? Because these a lot of these older Game Pass games, the ones that don't have the X and S, X and S on them are... Xbox One games, which means they can be played directly off the hard drive if you choose, but the X or S optimized ones need to be played on the internal. But here's the great thing about that, is I have that three terabyte external drive attached to there, and so I have these Series X games, like, or, like, or Doom, I guess, is the older one. But So if you have an X or S game that you want to play, you can copy it off onto your external drive and then copy it back when you need it, so that it's not taking up a ton of space. And these drives are swappable between your Series S and your Series X. So if I have a bunch of games on my external hard drive on my S, when you get an X, you can plug it in, move them over. The Microsoft ecosystem for Xbox is so user-friendly and so mature and reliable and fantastic. I love the PlayStation, I love the PlayStation 5, but the PlayStation ecosystem is a pain. I end up dealing with quite a bit of stress in that. Um, the Xbox Series X and S, you plug them in and they will just fucking work. <laughs> and that is great. So yeah, so storage, I'm telling you, is not an issue. So like I mentioned, I'll leave links and stuff for this too. I have a large uh, RAID array of hard drives that right now is I think about 12 terabytes where I keep all my videos and photography stuff that I do, the stuff that I capture and edit for this channel. I have big storage from there. My, most of my array is three and four terabyte drives, not SSDs, just platter hard drives. As some of them have started to die, like they're in the early stages of dying to the point where I replace them in my RAID array so I have reliable storage for my critical data, but they're not like dead drives. 
they still work they're just having some sectors that aren't being really nice i have had several of those three terabyte drives get demoted down and these are my external drives now because they don't need to be super reliable they work fine for this external storage and if the worst happens and the drive dies all i have to do is re-download these games but that said you can get a refurbished three terabyte hard drive on am on amazon for like 40 bucks you can get a four terabyte refurbished hard drive for like 50 55 bucks and you can get an external hard drive enclosure usb 3.0 that plugs right into your console high speed transfer between them for i don't even remember no offhand i'll put links for it below but i'm guessing in the ballpark of 10 to 20 bucks like not super expensive so you're talking about for about 60 to 80 dollars a three terabyte expansion to the series s and for games on game pass that are not series x or s games you can play them straight off that hard drive. That's just built-in storage versus paying the $120 or whatever it is for a one terabyte SSD expansion that will you know, stream the new generation games straight off of it. Just so you know, that's not what this is. So that's the advantage of buying the expensive module that Microsoft officially supports that plugs into the console. The fact that, yes, it may be a little bit more expensive, but the fact that the Xbox solution literally just plug and play, I like that. I still haven't gone out and done that yet although it's on my list of things to consider because i have these three terabyte drives so i don't have to and you'll see on my series x i have a similar situation so so yeah i've got the storage that i need for my series s right now let's fire up forza horizon 5 and show you what a beautiful modern generation game looks like what do you have to download an update what are you doing <laughs> they installed an update since i did this yesterday okay now, <laughs> now that it's updated, let's fire it up, switch to a Ferrari because I'm sad it's going to load into a Nissan um, just because that's what I was in. <laughs> but uh, let's hop in a Ferrari, go for a little drive, show you what the graphics and the performance is like on the Series S, and then switch over to the Series X on the same game. And I'm going to show you how effortlessly it switches over. It even syncs your save progress. Um, it's amazing. I'll show you all. Um, it's syncing now from wherever I played it last, which may have been on the X when I was setting it up yesterday. So it's going to load into my little save house in this orange Nissan. That's how I know that's what car I'm in because I haven't played this in a little while. I've been playing Halo. I've been playing... Uh, actually, I haven't played a whole lot of video games as much lately. been kind of busy, but been playing Halo. been playing uh, God of War, actually. I'm going to do a video on that um because the, the new god of war is coming out this year too ragnarok so all right let's go vroom vroom in the boom boom so yeah this oh my god even look it's a serious S, it's so gorgeous like look at this so let me switch real quick and make sure that i can show you what mode i'm on i prefer this in performance mode just because it is the graphical difference between quality and performance mode really for me, hasn't been that noticeable. Oh, it's in quality right now. So let's do performance just because the higher frame rate is better. Um, oh, you have to restart. Okay, it's got to restart the engine to do that. You can see some of the reflections maybe aren't as aren't as crisp with the rain on the car maybe as it was in quality mode. Um, I'm playing with the audio off so I don't get any echo and I don't want to put my headphones on right now. But yeah, I'm just going to cruise around a little bit. So my shifts may not be great because I usually use the audio to know when I need to shift. Um, but just look at this game. You can see the environments are still like the draw distance is enormous. As a matter of fact, let's go up a, let's just go up a hill. The, like, honestly, when I'm, if you go pixel peeking, if you really look, I mean, you're going to see that there's, yes, there's a difference. I'm not trying to pretend like the Series S is going to do what the Series X does for $200 less. But I will tell you from a standpoint of gameplay experience, and honestly, that this is something that's been lost before, but that is what matters in games, is your gameplay experience. There is not a huge noticeable difference like to where you would, in your memory, like think back on uh, one of your favorite single player games you've ever played on an old generation console, PS2, PS3. I always think back of, to like Bioshock because it is my favorite game of all time, and it was on an old generation console, right? So I played it on the Xbox 360. When I think back in my memory to that game, I don't remember the specific graphical fidelity. Like It's like remembering a movie that you watched back in the day. 
your brain remembers it in full resolution, if you will. Um, so the experience of playing the game and the graphical fidelity in your memory as far as how you experience these games honestly isn't going to make as big a difference as you think it will in the moment when you're staring at the screen and you're like ah this is very beautiful versus that yeah there's going to be a difference but i'm going to show you and i'm going to show them side by side too that it's not as big as you think so i think that's good enough there one thing i will jump into real quick is game pass um just to show you what a ridiculous steal this is. So let's just go to all games. All right, so this is alphabetical, 100 plus games in this collection. So we'll just start, just quickly scroll through. Let's see if we can just call ones out as we go. Alien Isolation. Fire Team Elite got added after I bought it. I bought Fire Team Elite, then it got added to Game Pass. <laughs> it was kind of a slap in the dick, but it can come out off of Game Pass in the future too, and I, I still own it, but anyway. Uh, 360 Games Back for Blood is on Game Pass. Bard's Tale games, Battlefield 1943, which I own from the 360 days, Bad Company games, all the Battlefield games. These are the EA Play ones that come with Game Pass Ultimate. Old ones like Bejeweled, Black, Battlefield 5 is on here from EA Play. X01 was a fun little indie game that I wouldn't have ever paid money to play that on Game Pass I enjoyed. Like, there's a lot of games, Firewatch, another one that, when it came out, you know, years ago, I was like, oh man, that looks interesting. But it was like, I don't want to pay 10, 15, 20 bucks for it. I should have, I feel bad, but <laughs> because it ended up being a great game and I got to play it for free on Game Pass. Free, anyway. Uh, all the Gears games, all the Microsoft first party games on Game Pass. All the Halo games on Game Pass. When a new Gears comes out, it's gonna be on Game Pass day one and it's gonna be here where you can play it. No Man's Sky is on here. My son has been playing a bunch of games on here that he loves, Astroneer he's been playing a ton of and it didn't cost me anything, it's just on Game Pass. He comes in Game Pass every once in a while and just looks for games and just downloads them and installs them. Um, but let's switch over to the Series X and launch up Horizon 5 and show you the ecosystem. Horizon 5. So here we go. You're already playing on Series S. Kill it. Bring it over here. It's going to synchronize my play session and it should load in, if not exactly where I am in that Ferrari, hopefully at my safe house, my load house, whatever it is for like single player games, for any, honestly, any game you really wanna play, the experience on Xbox, how seamless it is and how it keeps things synced through Xbox Live, it's, it's the most convenient and amazing thing ever, especially if like I wanna play something, like say I want Seb to come in here and play a game with me on the Series X and we capture it together, like say we wanted to play Gears together and capture a session of it on my Series X, I can do that. And then we go and play the next night on the Series S and just chill on the couch it will seamlessly sync our save game across to the console and we don't have to do anything, it just works. So you can see it did bring me back to the save house, but I'm in the new car. And you know, that sign that I got is, uh, you know, count. So my progress has all been saved. Now you can see here, let's go in and make sure that I'm still on performance mode. I'm on performance mode already on the Series X because that's what I play on. And so here you can see, yes. This is just objectively better looking on the X than the S, but not so much so that, that you really are gonna care all that much. If you're not really just completely staring at it, yes, the graphics are a little bit more crisp and the reflections on the car look nicer. The overall resolution just is better. Is it $200 better? Is it, I can buy it right now today better um after this oh, oops after this i'm gonna switch over to the xbox one. Ooh, oh my ferrari uh switch over to the xbox one x which is also 4k um but the last generation and we're gonna show it so you can see the comparison between it and the one s and see if it's worth the upgrade to the one s if you already have an xbox one or an xbox one x okay so now we got a clean car scream it so that we can compare them side by side and just show the Series S versus the Series X. So, yeah, again, I'm not going to try and pretend like they're just as good or the difference is negligible. The Series X is definitely a better, more powerful machine. But like I said, in your memory, when you're going back and playing these games, it's I'm telling you, it's not going to make as big a difference as you think. And 
what good is it to not to be like, oh, well, the, the Series S isn't going to be as powerful as the Series X. You can't get a Series X right now. And you can get a Series S right now. I mean, let's look at them side by side. Is that, is that worth not being able to play the next generation games? I don't know. Maybe it'll come to a point where the, you can't backwards compatible play some of these on the old ones. And the older experience is definitely going to be downgraded on some games. Like for Battlefield 2042, for example. Even with uh, the ability to dynamically load the game, like Smart Delivery, it is a different, actual different experience on the older generation consoles. So even though the graphical downgrade exists on the Series S, that's it. The rest of the gameplay and, and features are kept intact. So let's jump over to the One X to just show this last graphical comparison. And then we'll wrap this whole big rant up. It's just going to be slower on the old console. So this is an Xbox One X with a one terabyte internal drive. And let's fire up. Forza Horizon 5 on last gen. They're up there, honestly, Forza and Gran Turismo, like Gran Turismo's my, been my jam for like ever. Um, the Forza games have gotten to the point where I like them both, you know? So Forza, when it comes to the Xbox, Halo, Forza, Gears of War, like those are the big ones that jump into my mind as the big Xbox games that I really uh, like having access to. Um, as far as one console generation for the other. For the cross-platform ones, you know, obviously not quite, not nearly as important. Um, although I've got to say, for the PS5, the DualSense controller is literally a game changer. I mean, there have been games that are cross-platform I buy for the PS5, even though I like the Xbox ecosystem better, because the DualSense controller is literally a game changer. I mean, the haptic feedback, alone is worth it. The adaptive triggers, it's just, I'm super excited for the new Horizon game coming out on Friday. Um, oh my god. So the Xbox One X has a physical a platter hard drive, a one terabyte hard drive, and it's probably probably a 6400 RPM laptop drive, let's be honest. It's probably on a full size 7200 RPM desktop drive in there. Oh my god, this is so much slower. <laughs> Oh my god, it's still loading. Get a Series S already. Seriously? Get a Series S. Why wouldn't you? $300. Get a Series S. Still, okay, still waiting. Oh, I thought it was done, but it's just it just lagged while it was transitioning from one image to the other. Oh my god! Are you guys still doing- are you still playing on Xbox One? What's wrong with you? I bet the PS4 does this too, doesn't it? Man, I'm starting to remember how long it took things to load on the PS4 with like Modern Warfare and stuff like that. Oh, this is pain. Maybe this being a new game, it's not optimized for last gen for loading speeds? Holy shit, it's still loading. Do you even care what the graphics look like after you've been waiting 15 minutes for the game to start? I don't care if these graphics are better than the Series S, which they won't be. Well, I'd pay $300 not to wait this long. Holy shit. Okay, good. Okay, good. Ugh. It just, it just looks flat. It just looks a lot flatter, doesn't it? Oh my god, I swear. If this is... I don't know if there's a quality mode versus performance mode on this, but I'm not switching. <laughs> because if it has to reload, I'm gonna kill myself. Hold on, let's look. Oh, ooh, man, that is noticeably worse. Where's the... Oh, it hasn't even loaded yet. Hold on. I'm trying to bring up the menu. Why can't I even bring up the menu? Oh, okay. All right. All right. It just it was still loading apparently. That's weird. 
God, this is so slow. They they probably did not optimize this for last gen. I am sorry if you're playing on last gen. Okay, so there's no option for quality. There's no. It is what it is. Uh, the car looks pretty. The environment looks last gen. The responsiveness is much worse. This feels sluggish, and I can tell the frame rate is lower. Yeah, this is... Everything's a lot blurrier, for sure. This is noticeably last gen, but to Forza's credit, this still looks nice. This isn't... This isn't shitty. I kind of hate... <laughs> I've got to follow this same route. But you can see, again, even though I switched console generations, it was still a seamless transition from one game to the next, like from one console to the next. So it picked up my gameplay there. So if I had, you know, and again, and I hate to say it as far as the advantages of digital versus a disc, if you have a digital version of a game, you can install it on every console that you have and honestly, on even if you go to a friend's house and they have the game installed there, as long as you own it on your profile, you can install it and you can just pick up where you left off effortlessly on any Xbox. Anywhere that you log in and play this game, it'll pick up right where you left off. And that's just amazing. I know, I know the PlayStation does that too. I know that cloud saves are part of PlayStation Plus. But I will tell you that it is not this seamless. It is not this mature and 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 robust. It's just not the same. So yeah, the game, the car, they smart. They made the car look really nice. But the environment definitely <laughs> took a downgrade. So anyway, let's uh, go ahead and fire these off, turn these off, and uh, go ahead and wrap it up. Okay, minions, so that is the hard sell for why you should go ahead and get an Xbox Series S if you don't have a Series X right now. If you can get your hands on a Series X at MSRP, by all means, do it. Don't pay the scalpers. Just don't encourage that behavior. Um, but hopefully this addresses all of your concerns about why you might think you don't want a Series S. And I'm telling you, I didn't think I wanted one either, and I got one kind of on impulse because I could when they were on pre-order, and I gotta tell you, I have not regretted it. Having the Series X in here as my primary, the Series S out there so that Seb can play games on Game Pass and so that I can hop out there if I want to, just to sit on the couch and play whenever I want. I'm telling you, it is absolutely worth it. Follow the links down in the description below. Grab yourself a Series S an external hard drive, and an enclosure, and for literally less than $400 in two days, you will be on a next-gen console, and I'm telling you, you're not gonna regret it. If you guys enjoyed this, found some value in it, like it, I think this is useful enough, share it. I don't usually talk about that. Share this with someone who, who maybe is thinking about getting a Series S. Subscribe if you want more stuff from me, and I will see you guys in the next one.